Hey guys, hopefully this week I can finish up second seat on my 911. Alright, before I get onto the seats, um, a lot of you have been asking what's going on with my engine and it's been a long process of working out backwards and forwards what we're trying to do and, uh, and, and how we're trying to do it and it actually hasn't been shipped away yet. Neil at Performance Developments in LA has been working tirelessly trying to sort out what we can do a bit special with this engine that's repeatable, trying to uh, design new parts and um, it, I think it's going to be quite an interesting uh, process to, uh, to build this engine. I have my case, crank, heads, uh, most of the bits and pieces I need to send away to be machined are in these two boxes. So what I need to do is I need to um, get these set up on a pallet. So uh, I've got this old pallet. I need to make it as small as possible. So um, I'm going to cut up and modify this pallet and make it uh, the size of these boxes and then we can um, load it all up and get it ready to ship. Staring into the sun Which tries to blind our eyes Oh, we're dancing forever Under the beautiful skies Somewhere over the ocean All right, well, I use my bathroom scales and weighed up everything individually and um, my whole palette is 82 kilos. This box is actually 45 kilos, this is 28, so this is a lot lighter than this one, so it's not quite as top heavy as it looks. So I'm gonna wrap the whole thing up in uh, in plastic and yeah, hopefully uh, get it shipped off in the next day or so. Ready to go, so now I need to get back into this seat and... Uh... Alright, I've got the uh, the cover back off the seat and one of the first things I'm going to need to do is to sew on all the Velcro bits so that I can actually tension the centre and again work my way out and see if I can uh, get this thing the way I want it. Okay, I came out one night during the week and I glued in all these Velcro pieces just to save some time. Now I can Velcro it in place and then I can start working out where I need to tweak it to uh, get it to fit just the way I want it. Alright, I've sort of fiddled around with this for a little while and uh, there's a couple of spots that I'm still not really happy with. This is a bit loose in here so I'm going to try and tension this up a bit more also here. There's also this part here, which I'm, I'm just really not happy with. So I'm gonna have to try and play around and see if I can tidy it up somehow. I mean, this is a nice straight line here and this dips down like this. Let's see if I can fix it. magic with a heat gun and um, yeah it's starting to look uh, quite decent so now I need to get on to um, trimming up all these pads
pads for the second seat done, although I am not very happy with this back piece, so I'm going to probably unpick it and re it. This seat is still a little bit loose for my liking, so um, I think I'll leave that for today. I've had enough. My next job is uh, something that um, I think might uh, be quite interesting to tackle, so uh, let's get into that one. All right, so you've watched me over the last few weeks uh, work on these door trims, and I've put in the nice uh, door pulls, and um, it's really starting to come together. But um, one thing that I really wanted was I wanted armrests, but I didn't really like the factory ones. They are very big and cumbersome, and they take up the whole bottom part of the door. I always liked what they did on the Singer cars. They made a simple armrest that uh, just looks really nice. And scratching my head, trying to come up with a way to come up with something like that, I thought, um, how about check the wrecking yards? And what I came up with is this. This armrest is going to look beautiful there. And believe it or not, this is actually off of a Hyundai XL. And um, at the moment it looks like a pretty nasty plastic piece, but my plan is to trim it nicely in leather with the double stitching and um, I think that will be quite a nice addition to this car. Simple, neat, not over the top and um, yeah, not an expensive part. Sorry about the rain. All right, so the first step in trying to trim these in leather is actually to first make a pattern. And I'm gonna make that pattern out of vinyl because it's much cheaper and uh, it's just gonna be thrown away afterwards. So I need to basically work out how many pieces I'm going to need and where to sew them all together and how to join them and how to make it all work. Alright, so I've cleaned them up and I've worked out roughly what I need to do to make these patterns. I'm going to need three pieces of leather to make it work. I'm going to have a, a seam along this ridge line and then along the back I'm going to have a seam along that edge and a seam along the lower edge. So there'll be a piece in the back, a piece for the top, and a piece for the lower edge. So um, now I have to start making my pattern. Alright, so I've now made my patterns up so what I've done is I've covered this whole thing in vinyl and um, and made my separate pieces and I've cut them level with each other there's a bit of excess glue and stuff on here that's not a big issue and I've marked the pencil lines that uh, I've marked so that I've got reference points for where I sew it back together again but now I have a piece in the center a piece for the top and a piece for the bottom so now I can take these off add my seam allowance and then cut them out of leather and see if they'll actually, uh, see if they work. All right, so now I just uh, go through and I'm gonna peel off all of these individual pieces, transfer them onto my hide so I've got my uh, leather bits. All right, so I marked out my patterns and uh, I left my 10 mil seam allowance. Now I'll sew it together and see see if it works as well as I'm hoping it will. All right, so again, all the seams are glued down. So uh, now I want to put my nice purple double stitching through the center. Sorry about the rain on the roof. I know it's really loud, but I finished my double stitching here. It looks all nice and neat. So now all I do is glue this onto this. You could change everything tonight. And there's one armrest, mostly done. So um, now I'll just uh, now I'm, I am definitely happy with the pattern. I'll go and cut out the other one and um, sew it up and get it to the same stage as this. So I have both armrests trimmed. Now, 
The last thing that I have to do is along this lower edge at the bottom, at the back, uh, they're just glued together. But over time, they can more than likely peel off and it's gonna be terrible. So the way to actually finish it up is I've sewn just a, a single stitch along the edge of both sides at the end and uh, now I have to go through and actually hand sew them together. Sort of the uh, same sort of principle you use on a steering wheel or something like that. Alright, that's they're all done and uh, they'll go on there something along those lines and now and I know a lot of you will be like you can't put Hyundai XL parts on a Porsche but no one's ever gonna know are they oh maybe we should just go to fun facts and this is Jeff hi guys you may know about Porsche's latest creation the 911R but did you know that this car actually takes its name from the 1967 911R. And this car was based on a 911S which was stripped down as far as possible. Most of the panels were fiberglass and the windows were plexiglass. And most of the metal parts were drilled full of holes to look like Swiss cheese. By the end of the 1030 kilo 911S had been reduced to the 800 kilo 911R which remains to this day the lightest car ever produced by the factory. Alright guys that's it again for another week. Um... We got a little bit done, I was quite happy with how the uh, armrests came out, they look really good so um, hopefully next week I can put them all in and um, yeah we can get a bit more progress. So uh, as always please like and subscribe to my channel Home Built by Jeff and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. Alright, see you guys.